Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on FBL Now. Today we're going to be going over my new update to team selection for game week one. We of course just had a bunch of new preseason games so my team has now changed drastically because of it. So if you're excited for the video drop a like down below, leave a comment and let's get into the video. So starting things off in goal we're back to Onana, the Man United number one replacing David De Gea. Again the 5 mil price point is not bad for this player at all and I'm Constantly umming and iron between going with him and a uh, or between a 4.5 mil keeper, and it's it's generally just so up in the air. I don't know what to do with it, but I've gone with Onana at the moment, which obviously means I don't have Luke Shaw because I'm not going to be playing double United defence. Uh, but yeah, Onana in goal again it should be a, a very solid asset to that Man United team, and hopefully gets a few clean sheets as well. Don't know if he's going to get the Golden Globe like De Gea did last year, but uh, either way, I think for five mil he should be a, a very decent option. United have got some okay fixtures as well not the greatest fixtures from a defensive standpoint but uh yeah i think they'll still do pretty well at the start of the uh, the start of the season and they've got wolves at home for the first game week so not bad at all at the back we've got estopinion who's got luton at home gabriel who's got forest at home and chilwell who's got liverpool at home so all the home games are for the back three and the goalkeeper um now of course there's no trent in this draft there's no shore in this draft so that's two holes in my team that you know arguably are quite difficult to fill but um Chilwell in that Chelsea game yesterday as well was just so good. He was on corners. Um, I think he picked up an assist. He had like a decent shot in the, uh, on target. He had some pretty good chances in the box as well. Set up a few good balls and he, and he got like relatively forward as well. He got really, really forward. And it's just I feel like having Chilwell in my team, if he can dodge those injuries, I think he's going to be a really, really good option to have. And especially because of the Chelsea fixtures after Liverpool are just so, so good. So I, I think I need to have Chilwell in my team. He's becoming more and more of a staple. I think Chelsea just looks so good under Poch now. I don't think he knows what his starting 11 is yet. I think Chilwell will be in it though. I think he's just such a good option to have. Um, and yeah, the, 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 the games that he's been having preseason, just, they just speak volumes of the kind of player that he is. So hopefully he can do very, very well. But uh, yeah, I think he's 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 basically as nailed as Gabriel and Estepinion now in my my draft whether i bring trenton as well or sure i think chihuahua will just be there regardless um so that's the back line and that's my goalkeeper and uh, the midfield has changed we're brought in erdegaard now as well we've got saka so obviously that means i've not got jesus because i've already got my three arsenal options here but yeah i've gone erdegaard rashford saka matoma and bruno fernandez um of course united have just signed the new striker so i don't know how he's going to uh, impact the team i don't know if he's gonna be a sure starter or what I think they definitely need a striker and he should be starting most of the games with probably like Rashford on the left, um, Bruno just behind and then obviously on the right you can have um, somebody else. I don't know where Mount's going to play as well. Like there's all these players they're bringing in that are going to have like these different positions. But um, yeah, I, whether he plays every single game, you'd, you'd expect him to play most of them. I mean, they have just signed him for like 70 mil or something. So arguably going to be in every single starting lineup you'd like to think but uh yeah brought in Erdegaard as well that could easily be a Martinelli though could easily be um even like a trot like Trotter has been having such a good preseason as well very very risky to bring him in but uh, I think he could be a very very uh good option as well but again his minutes are just all over the place but that's why I've gone to Erdegaard just for the minutes really just there's not really any risk with Erdegaard and Saki you know they're going to be starting every game you know they're going to be playing most of every single game and uh he's the captain as well so he's on a few set pieces so uh hopefully he can reward me but again I'm I'm a little bit iffy about whether he's going to be in my final um, game week one team. Uh, Rashford, Wolves at home. Again, another sure starter. Should be playing every single game. I think he only got dropped a couple of times last season. Um, and that was for like injuries. And there's also a couple of other things as well. Like I think he had like... Um not a fallout with Ten Hag, but it was like late for training or something, so he got dropped. But again, he, he, you know, there was no like bad blood between him and the manager. Uh, and then Saka, also Forest home on penalties, should be anyway. He has missed another one preseason, but uh, either way, should still be on penalties. Matoma is someone that I'm kind of like less enthusiastic about right now. Um, there's there's just other options now for 6.5 that I think are probably better than him. Like the new art, the uh, the new uh, Aston Villa signing at 6.5. He's a he's a decent option as well. Um, and there's also for like Crystal Palace as well. There's some really good options of like around six, six point five that have just been doing really, really well preseason. And I think we're just so fixated on last season's Matoma and also uh, the fixtures that we've got at the start of this season. But Matoma hasn't really been doing too much at all. So I may not even have him in my team. I know that Brighton's fixtures are so good at the start of the season, but you know if he's not going to be getting any returns against these like um, you know lower league sides, you know there's no guarantee he's going to be doing it against like Luton and stuff like that. But either way. Matoma isn't the draft at the moment, but definitely could change. And then also Bruno Fernandez, also on penalties. Um, I, I don't think he'll be playing deeper. A lot of people are worried that he's going to be playing quite deep, but I think because obviously Fred might be on the way out, but uh, they've still got Casemiro and stuff. And yeah, I think that um, 
I, I think he was just really unlucky last season not to get a lot more returns. Like, his XG and expected assists were just so much higher than what he got. He, you know, he hit the woodwork so many times. He created so many chances that his teammates just couldn't finish. So it's not necessarily his fault. Um, but uh, yeah, at, at this point in time, I think there's still a few players that will be changing in this midfield. But um, that's who I've got at the moment. Now, before we get into the forwards, another um, quick word from our sponsor. If you're using different apps and websites for the latest football news and need a solution with it all in one place, then Route 1 might be something that you need to take a look at. With the Route 1 newsletter, you'll never be out of the loop again. It gathers all the football news and delivers it straight into your inbox in a snappy five minute read. It takes seconds to sign up and also keeps you up to date with all of the latest FPL news for absolutely free. But that's not all. As a subscriber, you'll get amazing discounts on football tickets and shirts and football experiences, European away days included. Join before September for free and pay nothing ever. No risk to you, unsubscribe anytime, just scan the code on the screen. Now let's get back into the video. Okay, so finishing things off up top, I've gone for a little bit of a, a different pick and we've brought in Darwin Nunes um, for Liverpool, who's got Chelsea away. He's actually been having a very, very good preseason so far. He bagged again. Um, and the, the kind of risk with Nunes was that like, his minutes were just going to be dropped, but he seems to be like starting every single game. I think that he's really benefiting from this number nine role with like how they're playing now. And if he does get the minutes, which again, it looks like he is, he has started like pretty much every preseason game, I'm pretty sure. I think he's going to be a really, really good asset. The only issue is that he's the exact same price as Nkunku. And I think we're going to see a lot more 3 4 3 drafts because. We've got Nunes, Nkunku, and then obviously Haaland has to be there as well. You've also got Gabriel Jesus. So we had like no striker options. And now there's like four really, really good options that have kind of come out of nowhere. And they're all around the same price point, barring Haaland, obviously. I mean, there's also Kane, but he, he probably will be going off to Bayern Munich. But um, they're going to be like the main striker options this year. And it's trying to pick you know two or one of those because obviously Haaland's down for that down by default most of the time so you got to pick either Darwin and Kunku or Gabriel Jesus if you're only playing two strikers up front and they're all really really good options uh I think I'm more inclined to go with Nkunku just because he seems to be on like penalties and stuff and I think his minutes are going to be better than Nunez's but like at the same time Nunez has just been playing so well and I also don't have any Liverpool in this draft either and uh, I kind of want him but again if he gets you know the, the only problem is if he does get benched I've not got a very strong bench uh, coming on for him. You know, I've got Pal Torres, Bell, and McCarthy. And to be fair, McCarthy's only in there because he's been having a pretty decent a pretty decent preseason as well. And he's only 4.5, but there's no guarantee he's going to be starting like every single game. So with this draft, I have to kind of get all of my choices right. And, you know, barring Darwin Nunes, they should all play. Maybe Chilwell might get the uh, the odd rotation and stuff. But remember, with Chelsea's fixtures this season, that there's nowhere near as many as they usually have. And so because of that, you know, he's going to be playing less. He's going to get more recovery and stuff, which is another reason why I think Chelsea are really good options. So this is how my draft is at the moment. But I think there could still be a few things that change. Again, with the United striker, when he comes in, that could easily go from four strikers to five strikers that are really good options. How is that going to affect, like, Rashford and Bruno? We might be seeing less of those in everyone's drafts. And, you know, there's not long now until the season starts. So... It's going to be very, very interesting how it kind of all like shapes up. But uh, as of right now, this is what we're looking like. But I think I probably will be getting rid of Nunes for Nkunku. And I may even switch it up to 3-4-3 three, because three, I could bring in Nkunku, downgrade Erdegaard. And that would also save me like 0.5 mil as well or a mil or something like that. So that could also be, uh, be another option. In fact, if I actually go to my transfers right now uh, and do that. So I actually get rid of... Um, Makati here and I bring in uh, let's just say Nkunku comes into my squad um, I need to make 3 mil from somewhere so obviously Erdegaard I mean that would only give me double Arsenal as well which isn't great because you know their fixtures are just so so good but I've got 5.5 to play around with there um, so I could bring in like to be fair like Anderson for Newcastle has been playing very very well um, and you know <laughs> that could even be an option as well if I could find like um, a mil from somewhere I could even bring in like Diaby or something like that as well and have a really good strong bench but I, I could probably do that by downgrading Onana to a 4.5 mil goalkeeper and then also downgrading Palteras to a 4 mil. But that would also, you know, my, my keepers wouldn't be great. I wouldn't have any United defense. But it would allow me to bring in like another decent midfielder option to strengthen my bench. But I don't know. I'd have to think of this like 3-4-3 three, three draft or something. But that's definitely another avenue you could take. But either way, as of right now, this is how my team's looking. And um, yeah, it's probably going to change a bit. But uh, thank you for watching today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, drop a like. Leave a comment. How is your Game Week 1 team looking? Subscribe if you're brand new. We're so close to 7,000 subscribers. If we could hit it by Game Week 1, that would be insane. But yeah, thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. And until next time, peace.